Recently, the infamous statue of Christ the Redeemer in Brazil was badly struck on the head by lightning. What made many people scared is that this is not the first time such an event has happened. In fact, earlier on, its right thumb was destroyed by the intensity of a lightning strike. And years later, another lightning strike damaged its head, only for that to happen again. The recurrence of damage to the statue's head under the same circumstances has made many devout Christians scratch their heads in search of an interpretation. Could it be a simple case of natural coincidence? Or is God sending a warning to mankind about a way of life he's angry with? Have humans disobeyed God to the point where he is left with no choice but to show us a bit of his wrath in disapproval of our actions and in a bid to cause us to retrace our steps to him? Now let's see what God is telling us. Lately, the world has been thrown into a state of shock due to the really strange things that have been happening to religious statues around the world. In the city of Akita, Japan, a wooden statue of the Virgin Mary did something incredible. People said this simple statue cried real tears and glowed in a mysterious way that couldn't be explained. But then tragedy struck. The statue's right hand was somehow broken off by an unknown force. Even with the damage, believers still visit and pray to this statue. Then came the Christ of the Abyss bronze statue off the coast of San Frutuoso, Italy underwater, which has repeatedly been mysteriously struck by lightning, and even had its arms broken right off. In Ohio, a statue of Jesus was mysteriously struck by lightning and destroyed by fire. In Drogheda, Ireland, in 2019, something very disturbing happened to a statue of Our Lady Bug of Lords. The head of the statue was somehow cut clean off, with only the head found lying nearby. No one knows who did this or why they damaged the sacred statue this way. As if that wasn't enough, still in Ireland, in the town of Knock, a statue of the Virgin Mary suffered major accidental damage from a lightning strike during a big storm. The lightning bolt shattered parts of the statue into pieces. You think that was all? The most shocking one happened recently when one of the world's most famous religious statues, the giant Christ the Redeemer statue overlooking Rio de Janeiro, Brazil was hit by lightning bolts many times, causing it damage. Wondering where we're headed? You'll find out in a bit. Now, if you look at the trend of the damage to these structures, you'll notice the destruction took a really brutal form. All these tales of damaged and mysterious statues raise lots of questions with no clear answers. Was it a warning from God? Or is it just the random forces of nature? We'll find out soon. What could be the root cause of that event? The Bible contains important teachings that have shaped human history. One of the most meaningful is the very first warning against worshipping idols or statues of false gods. This warning is part of the Ten Commandments that God gave to the Israelites after freeing them from slavery in Egypt. They were standing before God looking for guidance in their newfound freedom. It was at this moment that God's voice rang out with a commandment that would forever shape the Israelites' relationship with him. God said in the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 4 says, You shall not make for yourself a carved image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. These words were part of the Ten Commandments and they carried great weight. To understand why this warning against idol worship is so important, we have to look at the history of the Israelite people and their relationship with God. The Israelites had been living in Egypt for many generations and were exposed to the worship of many different gods and goddesses there. These false gods were often represented by carved statues or images that people thought were sacred and deserving of worship. When God chose the Israelites to be his special people, he wanted them to have a unique relationship with him. He wanted them to see him as the one true God who created the universe and who alone deserved their worship and devotion. God was not simply prohibiting idolatry, worshiping statues or images as false gods. By warning against worshiping idols, God was emphasizing that he was the only true God. In a world where many people worshiped multiple gods and idols, God wanted to establish a unique bond with the Israelites centered on them worshipping only Him. It can be said that He was protecting the Israelites from falling into the trap of worshipping false gods, which could lead them away from Him. This commandment was also tied to the sacred covenant, the special promise God had made with the Israelites going back to Abraham. God had vowed to protect and bless them as their God if they obeyed Him and worshipped only Him. Warning against idolatry safeguarded this covenant relationship. There was also a deeper spiritual truth. Worshipping man-made statues distorts the true nature of the one real God, the Creator. God wanted the Israelites to rightly understand who He is. Prohibiting idolatry preserved this spiritual understanding. Moreover, 
idolatry often leads to immoral and destructive practices like sexual immorality and violence. Out of love, God wanted to protect the Israelites from these harmful things by warning them against idol worship. Interestingly, even Paul urged Christians to flee from idolatry, as you cannot worship both idols and the one true Lord and Apostle John concluded his letter by telling believers to guard yourselves from idols. So, across the Bible, from the giving of the Ten Commandments to the teachings of the Apostles, there is a consistent message. Idolatry is dangerous and must be avoided. Now, you might be wondering about the connection between these statues and idolatry. According to the Bible, idolatry means worshipping or giving extreme reverence to anything or anyone other than the one true God. It involves devoting yourself, showing deep respect, or giving extreme adoration to objects, images, ideas, or beings in a way that takes away from the exclusive worship and loyalty that should only be given to God. Idolatry can take many forms, like worshipping physical idols or carved images, putting false gods or deities above all else, making material possessions or wealth your ultimate priorities, or making personal desires, power, or success into idols. Over the years, these statues, especially that of Christ the Redeemer, have received unhealthy attention and veneration from people all over the world. We're talking extreme cases where people go as far as praying to the statue, seeking a spiritual connection or guidance, lighting candles, offering flowers or other symbolic objects as a sign of devotion. Some even take it a step further by holding religious ceremonies and processions near the statues, which can include prayers, songs, and rituals performed by religious leaders and worshipers. And as stated in the Bible, these things are not supposed to be and are considered cheating against God because only He deserves all worship, honor, and veneration. But you know, humans would always want to flaunt the rules so God attached severe consequences to disobedience of this command, as he cannot sit and watch his glory shared or given to any man. What is God warning us from and is there a solution to it? Looking at the forms these destruction came, we won't be wrong to say they're God's warning to us to turn from our evil ways to the path of righteousness. In the Bible, there are stories that talk about people being punished for idol worship. It happened when Moses was up on a mountain, talking to God and getting the Ten Commandments. Down below, the Israelites got tired of waiting for Moses to come back. So they made a golden statue of a calf and started worshipping it. God was very angry when he saw this. As a punishment, a lot of people got sick and died because of a disease, and others faced God's judgment for what they did. There's also the story of Jeremiah, who warned the people of Judah about the consequences of worshipping idols. He said that because they kept following false gods, the Babylonians would conquer their city, Jerusalem. The people would be taken away as prisoners. Even the prophet Ezekiel had a vision of terrible things happening to Jerusalem and even the temple being destroyed as a result of the idols they were worshipping. So you see, the consequences of idolatry are dire. Even in the end times, God warned us about this through the vision of John. In that vision, John witnessed some terrifying events, as recorded in the book of Revelation. He saw darkness fall over the world when the fifth trumpet blasted. A fallen star crashed down to earth with a massive force that unlocked a bottomless pit. From this deep, dark pit, thick, choking smoke poured out, blanketing the atmosphere in blackness. And emerging from within this ominous cloud of smoke were nightmare creatures beyond imagination. They had the bodies of battle-ready horses, but twisted human faces. Their hair was disheveled like women's hair, and their teeth were as sharp as lion's teeth. These hellish beings had an unholy power to inflict horrible agony on anyone not bearing God's divine mark. These creatures brought torment, like being stung by thousands of scorpions, searing excruciating pain worse than anything people had felt before. The agony was so overwhelming that many longed for death to take them, but it wouldn't come. Yet even suffering such unspeakable pain, humanity stubbornly refused to repent of their evil ways. Then came the deafening blast of the sixth trumpet, a massive apocalyptic army of 200 million riders on lion-headed horses suddenly appeared. The soldiers' breastplates glistened fiery red, inky black and sulfur yellow, a terrifying sight. Fire, smoke, and choking sulfur burst from the horses' gaping mouths, their serpent-like tails lashed out, laying waste to everything and destroying one-third of humankind. But you know what's more scary? Despite enduring devastating plagues and judgments, the stubborn survivors still clung bitterly to their witchcraft, sexual immorality, stealing and their powerless idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood that could not see, hear, or move instead of repenting and turning to the one true God. Completely given over to wickedness, they refused to renounce the sinful paths that led to their obliteration, 
It's quite scary the lengths God can go to protect his image. Now we need to understand that these idols are not just graven images. They can be anything that has shifted our attention from the true worship of God. As humans, many of us are guilty of this as, due to the worries of the earth, we tend to shift our focus and attention to other things. Is there a way out of such a situation? Yes, there is. A similar situation happened to King Manasseh, having ruled over Judah and encouraged idol worship during his reign. God punished him by allowing his enemies to triumph over him and even took him as a prisoner. But as soon as he changed his ways and asked God for forgiveness, God restored him as king. So, the only way out of this is repentance. If you feel this message is directed to you, it's not too late to turn back to your savior. Our God is a merciful father. And just as he forgave King Manasseh and turned away his agony, our God is faithful and kind to forgive us of any grievances and sin. If you're ready to make a U-turn, place your right hand on your chest and repeat this. Lord Jesus, I come before you with a heavy heart, realizing the mistakes I have made in turning to idols and false gods. I am truly sorry for placing anything above you in my life. I repent for seeking fulfillment and meaning in things that cannot satisfy my soul. I acknowledge that you alone are the one true God worthy of all my worship and devotion. I ask for your forgiveness and mercy. Please cleanse me, renew my heart, and guide me back to the right relationship with you. Help me to recognize and remove any idols or distractions that hinder my love and devotion to you. Grant me the strength to follow your path and trust in your provision. I commit myself to worshiping you alone, with all my heart, soul, and mind. May your presence fill my life, and may I find true joy and fulfillment in serving you. Thank you for your forgiveness and the opportunity to start afresh. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.